Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm TIG welding a stainless steel part today. It's a cooling manifold that will go in a local blow mold factory. You know, it's a water in, large inlet, and a bunch of smaller threaded nipples going to who knows where. That's about all I know about the part. I know it's stainless steel, and I know I want to keep it stainless steel. That's the theme of today's video, keep stainless stainless. That should be a t-shirt. And I say that because stainless steel, the, the, the perception is, well, stainless steel doesn't rust. Yeah, you can make it rust. You can screw up the stainless properties while you're welding it. So we'll get right into the welding right now. But at the end of the video, I'm going to list some bullet points on how to keep stainless stainless, how to maintain the stainless properties, not screw them up. Let's do it. Ideally, we'd be using a piece of stainless steel square tubing here, but this is what I've got to work with. It's been cut on a plasma cam. All the holes were popped in there with a the plasma cam. It's been sanded, but it still needs a good acetone wipe. All right. Sometimes all you need is an acetone wipe. Other times you might have to get out a buffing wheel or something like that, but it needs to be clean before you weld it. And so that was pretty nasty. I'm using aluminum angle for backing as well as for chill bars today. You know, sometimes parts require a high purity purge, other times aluminum or copper backing is sufficient to just provide enough, enough protection on that back side to not cause any degradation of the stainless properties. So you need a good fit up with no gap. I like my corner joints to be about like this, corner to corner. We're about to get some tacks on this thing. I'm using this, this little CK Worldwide MT200 today. I'm going to be using straight DC current today and I'll do a few videos and get into some aluminum and pulse and things like that. This is the torch that came with it, a nice little Superflex cable. This is the hardware kit that came with it. Nice little kit. I just don't use these style collet bodies much anymore at all. I have pretty much switched over solely to using a stubby gas lens kit. For a whole lot of years I used a setup just like this with a standard cup and an end cap, a short button end cap for pipe welding, for getting in tight spots. But even with a setup like this you can't get in as tight a spot as you can with a stubby gas lens. And I just like it better. It shrinks the overall size of the torch. I got used to welding with small water cooled torches and I don't like to always use a water cooler these days so a lot of times I'll use my air cooled 17 but with the stubby gas lens kit and it goes together something like this. And the main benefit is better shielding. I can stick my electrode out a lot farther and it's just a nice feel, nice small torch with good shielding. All right, I'm gonna set the machine, no, no pulse today. We'll do pulse in part two. I'm gonna set it to 200 amps and get some really quick, quick burst tacks on this thing. I'm using filler rod because of it's eighth of an inch thick today, but if this was like half this thickness, I probably would get really quick burst tacks without filler at all. Just a really quick blast and try to make the tack nice and small and clean. It's a really quick way to tack together some joints like this. And I'll have my tacks about every every three inches or so, sometimes closer if there's a slight gap and I want to shrink the gap up, I'll put more tacks. So I'm putting together two halves and I'm using that angle backing to pull heat out as well as to hold it straight. And then once I got the two halves together, I'm going to weld it all up using backing after I get it tacked. And then I'm also going to add chill bars. It takes a lot of clamps to do this. A little bit of effort, but it's very much worthwhile. I'm a little concerned on, you know, distortion with this much welding on stainless steel. So I'm going to really spend some time making sure that all these, all these corner joints are backed up with an angle on the inside and good fit and all that. Now I've got three pieces of this angle, one shorter than the others. The other two pieces are long enough to reach the whole distance and I can leave those in there. Uh, this one short one I'm going to have to move around a little bit. I'll weld a little bit over halfway, then I'll unclamp it, shift it over, and move it the other. And it just takes a minute and honestly it probably helps in just slowing me down a little bit and keeping me from getting in too big a hurry and overheating anything. But this is going to pull a lot of heat out of that stainless steel. It's worth the effort, definitely. See how close I've got the chill bars clamped up there? If this was thinner, I'd have them maybe even a little closer. All right, I'm going to adjust the amperage now. And stainless requires only about two-thirds the amps, typically, that carbon steel does, at least for a joint like this. So I'm going, to, I'm going to settle in at 100 amps, and that wound up being just about right. I was full pedal for most of this job after I, after I set this up, which made me think I actually could have used a finger switch on it if I wanted to. But the machine comes with a pedal, and I use the pedal. 
You want to keep your travel speed as fast as you can, not to the point that you're out of control, but to, to avoid heat from building up. That the, uh, the chill bars are really pulling a lot of heat out, so I could, could actually go slower than this and still not have any problems at all. But just as a general practice, you want to light up, get a puddle going, and get moving within about, probably I'm going to say two seconds. A second's even better, because without the chill bars, heat will build up quickly, and you need to light up, get a puddle going, and get moving to avoid heat buildup and avoid distortion and everything. So it's doing its job. Here's a quick look at the foot pedal. You know, uh, a, a major manufacturer did a survey years ago on the favorite foot pedal of welders, and this was the winner, the old school big metal sheet metal block pedal with the heel hook on the back. And so that's what they decided to go with here, and it's pretty nice. I'm using 1 16th diameter ER308L filler for this job. The job is 304. Stainless steel, and it's typically welded with 308 filler. If this was carbon steel, I might very well use a 332 diameter, 2.4 millimeter filler wire, just to keep from feeding so much. But this worked, this worked pretty good. A general rule of thumb is one size smaller filler wire really helps on a job like this on stainless steel. Because the amperage is lower, if you use a larger filler wire, it just really draws heat out of the puddle and it kind of can slow you down. So if this was a carbon steel job, I might very well have used a 332 wire just to dab, dab, dab and, and move out really fast, but the 1 16th wire seemed to work out pretty good. All right, let's talk about some tips for keeping stainless steel stainless. Shield the back side. Now sometimes aluminum or copper backing is sufficient shielding. Other times, like for food grade uh, sanitary tubing, a high purity argon purge is the way to go. Use a dedicated stainless steel wire brush. Dedicated means one that has only been used on stainless steel. A gas lens setup, not always needed, but never hurts. Use as large a cup size as is practical, along with chill bars whenever possible to pull that heat out. That helps with discoloration as well as distortion. Stainless, stainless is less thermally conductive than carbon steel. It heats up quickly, heat builds up quickly, and only two-thirds the amps are needed as compared to carbon steel in most cases. Using one size smaller filler wire than you would on carbon steel is helpful. And remember the three C's, clean, clean, clean. Sometimes an acetone wipe is enough, other times more cleaning is needed. I right, well, hope this video helps. Just a reminder, I support these videos with sales from my online store. It's at weldmonger.com. I've got several oversized cups for sale over there, Furic cups. The, the number 8, the number 12, the BBW. I'm adding products to the store all the time. I've got TIG fingers, uh, TIG torches now, the DVDs of all the YouTube videos that I've done over the past several years, and I'm adding products all the time. So I'd appreciate it if you go check out weldmonger.com. Oh, remember, stay tuned for part two of this video. I'm going to weld those, uh, I'm going to weld the nipples <laughs> and uh, end caps on. That lets me show some more features of this machine with the pulse TIG capability. And also, then I'll talk about purging because those end caps, there's no way I can get backing on those when I seal the thing up. Before I sign off today, let me just show you just a handful of the products that are on the store at weldmonger.com. Here's the stubby gas lens kit that you saw in this video. I also have a TIG Finger bundle with a regular TIG Finger and a TIG Finger XL for a good savings. And I've bundled them together with the Stubby Gas Lens Kit also for even more savings. I've got several, several different styles of Pyrex style Furic cups like this number 8, which is a really sweet cup. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.